back home for a nice road game. Sweet 16, back on a Monday, but we're here to give you some enthusiasm, some yeah. exuberance, some excitement to your Monday. Exuberating th- enthusiasm. Why? Well, yeah, exuberating excitement. That's Don't hurt like yourself. It. Hey, I did that well, David. You did. It's I like practiced the, that in the mirror for 45 minutes before I got here. Yeah, he did. And practice makes what? Makes perfection. Well, yeah, it just, just depends on how well you practice. UConn, Alabama, Purdue, and NC State make up the men's Final Four. The Yankees start the MLB season hot. We'll see how that continues. And Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice is under investigation for possible street racing and not in a Prius. I'm Jake Crane, and welcome to the Monday editions. It's Crane and Company. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the Final Four is officially set, but the only real question left is, can anyone actually beat UConn outside of getting a lot of just dumb luck? Well, it sure as hell doesn't look like it, considering they are literally beating people to sleep. They've been up by 30 at some point in every NCAA tournament game this year, which is just insane. But if there's a team out there that could give UConn a run and maybe have a chance to sneak out an upset, a team would have to have a, a couple of qualities. One, they'd have to be able to get insanely hot from the three-point line, have veteran guard play that can adjust to different paces, and depending on if you're up and down, that team would probably have to play a style that can throw UConn off rhythm if that's even possible. And lastly, you'd probably need to be freaky athletic at spots in the front court. A team, of, honestly, a lot like Alabama. Now, I'm not willing to say that Alabama's going to beat UConn. I mean, right now, the Huskies are the Costco of college basketball. They have everything and a whole hell of a lot of it. But this Alabama team does put the gump in gumption. And with old guards like Mark Sears and Aaron Estrada, Bama could hang around for a while. If they hang around enough, who knows what the hell can happen, especially if Sears turns into a robot again. But I still got UConn moving on. But man, what a story it would be if Nate Oates and them could pull off what seems impossible. All right. How did that monologue feel? Uh, Look, it's the truth. Yeah. Again, it's not just about my happiness, David. (laughs) But right now, when you look at the Final Four, you look at UConn. You talk about Zach Eady. You know, depending on how the game is officiated, you know, DJ Burns and all that stuff, that's great. Uh, But has anybody beaten this UConn team? I mean, can anybody beat this UConn team? I mean, Illinois is a top 10 team in the country by almost every metric on, on offense and defense. And I watched Murdered. UConn go on a 30 30 run. run. What was it five points at halftime? We're all watching it together. A 30 to nothing run? You can't score? I've never seen that. Never seen it. Uh, and I think UConn's the first champion to return to the Final Four since that Florida team did it, mm-hmm. right? 2007, something like that. So we're talking about 17 years. But I saw a fun fact for Nate Oates today, Alabama head coach. 11 years ago, Nate Oates was a high school basketball coach and math teacher outside of Detroit. Yeah. He sold flaming Hot Cheetos, Capri Suns, and Pop-Tarts out of his office to fundraise for the team. Gonzaga now, still does that. Now he's taking Alabama to its first Final Four ever. How's yeah. that for perseverance? Man, uh, save the SEC. Especially after Tennessee, you know, lost in what was a hell of a game to Purdue. I know we're going to get into that. But, uh, I mean, Blaine, you look at this Alabama team. You look at this story with Nate Oates. You know, what they've been able to do. How he's been able to, you know, turn that program around. But then I look at those things running around for UConn. And Dan Hurley looked pissed <clears throat> going on a 30-0 run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It- like, I just, this UConn team doesn't play down. They don't play down. They make you play up. And if you go back and you look at this UConn Illinois game, yeah, UConn went three from seventeen from three point, and they won by thirty. Yeah, I go back to the Northwestern <laughs> game they played. I watched Northwestern not miss a shot, not miss a three in the second half. I watched UConn win by sixteen. Alabama, it's been a hell of a run, guys. Hell of a run. You got to think you're doing it without your three, your best three point shooter right now. Who's coming back? You're beating That's quality cool. teams, but you're about to get showed the dragon, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. All right, okay. it's crazy. I can't remember the last time. And look, we talk about it. Anybody can win a basketball game, mm-hmm. right? It's a lot easier to win a basketball game than it is a football game. But I can't tell you the last time where I've looked at two 
Final Four spreads, and one's 11 and a half. The other one's plus nine and a half. Mm-hmm. Those are big spreads. A double-digit spread in the Final Four is a big spread. I like Alabama to cover that spread, but I just don't know how you can stop UConn with the waves and the depth and the talent and how well-coached they are. There's the only way, the only way maybe, is if you have something that looks like what they have down low. And that's Zach Eady from Purdue. Yeah. No one's been able to stop Zach Eady yet. If you look at him, if you breathe on him, it's a foul. He's, it's intoler- intolerable to watch Zach Eady play basketball, but it's a great way to do it. You go find the biggest guy on earth, <laughs> the biggest guy you can find on earth, and teach him somewhat the fundamentals of basketball and watch him grow, and that's what you get. So, Matt, you think Matt Painter, before every recruiting class, and I used to do this on NCAA football, goes, hey, Let's. What's the biggest person out there? He didn't even have to play basketball. Like, what's the big? I think Zach Eady was playing baseball. The worst thing he. Can could, you imagine that? That thing on the mound. I can't imagine even getting in the elevator with him, and I'm six foot seven. But the thing is, he was that height two years ago, and they couldn't get out of the first round. He's improved so much as a basketball player. It's true, it's incredible. And the Zach Eady Dalton connect matchup yeah. lived up to the hype. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about Godzilla versus King Kong or whatever. It's an early release. We are seeing a lot better play out no of one Purdue's else for, guards. No one, uh, Purdue's guards are incredible. Like, well, they've yeah. been playing awesome down the stretch. Well, and and I've I've got a lot I want to say about that game because they, Purdue has proven me wrong at that point, and, and maybe it needed to be a team kind of like this uh, with Purdue without maybe like a superstar like Ivy. Um, you, you know, at, at the guard or, or even working yourself down to the three uh, there at the small forward. Uh, but I want to let you guys know we're going to open the phone line 7.15 a.m. Central. That's 8.15 a.m. Eastern, 1-855-236-3228. Going to get to the chat in one second. But guys, it's a brand new month. we got a new month of betting. All right, so we all know, regardless of, of where you live, now it needs to be legal to be able to bet on sports. But when we were in where we just uh, were at, you could only use bet online. Yes, sir. Which is pretty kind of sweet. Uh, so, regardless of what sport it is, obviously we got the Final Four. We know you're going to be betting on that. The draft's coming up. We know you're going to be betting on that. College baseball, college softball, women's basketball. Got some great women's action uh, on tonight uh, yeah, between yeah, LSU and Iowa. Caitlin Clark uh, going up against Kim Mulkey and the crew. But if you're going to bet, you need to go to betonline.ag. Best spreads, uh, quick payouts. Easy to navigate, and when you use promo code Booster B W O S T E R, you get a fifty percent instant deposit bonus of up to a thousand dollars. That's BetOnline.ag. Use promo code Booster for that fantastic deal that we all know you love. BetOnline. The options are endless, and so is the fun. Also, surprise, surprise, we're headed down to Gainesville, Florida, for a Lady Ballers event on April fourth at three thirty p.m. Eastern. That's right, in the flesh, repping it. Important stuff. And if you're in the area, come join us as we continue to fight to keep women's sport, sports about actual women. You can find the RSVP link in our socials and in the show description. Let's save women's sports together. That's Gainesville, Florida. That's right, baby. And I don't know, we may talk some Billy Napier as well. And Graham Mertz and the boys on offense, you know, lean on what they did last year. We're going to see. I know what Blaine thinks, but make sure you check that out. All right. Let's get to the Booster Club. All right, Booster Club, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you donate, it's on topic. Ah! It will get red. If not, it will get red at the end of the show. We're going to start off with Zach. He says, Crane Crew, I need to know which huge underdog has the best chance this Saturday. I, I just can't pick somebody to beat UConn. I just can't do it. If, we're, if, like, honestly saying, you know, like we always do, who can actually win this game? It's NC State, and it's, it's for this reason. DJ Burns. Nobody is going to be as tall as Zach Eady. But what is one way that you don't get backed down or pushed around? You got to have some girth, dog. Like DJ Burns is seven foot four wide, <laughs> right? He's six nine in height. I don't think Zach Eady, who's going to be able to reach over DJ Burns, I'm not saying he's not going to have an advantage, but I don't think he's going to be able to back him in the post like that. I don't think he's going to be able to move him. I used to always say having to block people, and I think most offensive linemen or anybody who's had to block somebody in football will understand this. I found it harder to block the defensive lineman, especially on the interior, that was six foot or six foot one, as opposed to six foot five, because I could get underneath the taller guy and use leverage. With DJ Burns, 
Zach Eady, I don't think he's huge, but I don't think he's big enough, you know, f- scientifically, right, from like a, a core standpoint to be able to push DJ Burns around. So, you know, I, I would have to lean NC State because I just don't think anybody's beating UConn and, and DJ Burns, man. I don't see him getting, I don't think he can move him the way that he can move uh, Adu from Tennessee because I, I thought he moved Adu around easy. Let's go to Jared Hallett. Jared, what is up, my brother? Purdue already has a 7-2 freshman on the bench. If they win the title this year, that's a path forward for him. They'll get any 7-footer from 7-footer island that they win. We have a great relationship. Well, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, what, I'm, Matt Painter, my phone's sitting next to me whenever you want to ring me up. Yeah, at 12.01 a.m. on January 1st of each year, Matt Painter makes a call to 7-foot island. He's like, hey, y'all, y'all get any? Did y'all find any? Like, yeah, we just came back from Siberia. Or we just came back from the Amazon. You know, we found this monster just walking around ripping trees out of the ground. He lived under, in a cave under a waterfall, and it was Zach Eady. And he was just dribbling a huge boulder. So is all the criticism from this weekend against in the Tennessee game fair for, for Zach Eady with them calling him foul, foul Ming? And that foul the Ming was, is the I just don't know. Was, like, I, this is one of the exceptions poorly. where I look at it from a referee standpoint. I'm just like, well, my I don't problem, know how you call it. My, my, I don't know how you call my it. My issue with it, and you get this is Purdue won the game. Let's let's put nobody else from Tennessee could score. Yeah, it's true. it was Dalton no one Kinnick else scored in double figures. Purdue. It's he had what thirty-seven. It, no one else had double figures. Yeah, I would. I if you're Dalton Connect, I mean that's just got to be so lonely. I mean so ronery, right? I, just out there, you're the only hope. Ziggler couldn't hit a shot. No, he had. Adu no. just and and nobody thought you'd go. You know, you're going to sit there and be better than Zach Eady down low. But Adu wasn't able to do anything, right? It, it just, I mean, Estrella was the, the best player for Tennessee down low against Zach Eady, which shocked me. But no, I, I was just, my only issue was that Zach Eady wasn't getting called for some similar contact with fouls against him that he was garnering. Well, that's the criticism. Right? Yeah, like th- that's, I think that criticism is somewhat fair. Because I just want you to call the game the same way for both teams. That way I know how to operate if I'm a player or a coach. But I, I don't know, man. I don't know how you don't foul this guy. Like, what do you either, you either don't foul him? Because right? a lot of those were fouls mm-hmm. on Tennessee. You either don't foul him, and he's like, <laughs> you just, it's almost or you do you foul can't him. Let him get down. You can't let him. How get do the you? Ball. Okay. You well, can't let him did get a good the job ball. early of getting their hands on the ball before he got it up. Yeah. Right? And that's how they had to. I mean, well, like, do you double? So like, good. But then they tried to double, but, I mean, he's so good at passing out of the double yeah. team now and out of the triple team. And Purdue's, again, Purdue's guards lived up to, like, b- exceeded yeah, they play, expectations, yeah. really, from well, what we were talking well, about. Well, yeah, not shooting, though. I don't think Purdue could hit a three. I, I don't think Purdue shot the ball well at all against Tennessee. I think where, David, where I agree with you is I think the guards from Purdue physically matched Tennessee. That's what shocked me was lawyer – and all those, because they're smaller guys. Like, they're, they're yeah. not big guys. Braden Smith, smaller guy. Physically, you know, Tennessee and Matt Painter said this for the game. It's a football game, man. Like, that, that's what it's going to be. That's where I was surprised is that the guards physically were able to match Tennessee uh, somewhat. Neither team could hit shots outside of, really, it felt like Zach Eady and Dalton Connect. Now let's go to Scott Stewart. What's up, Scott? It says, Creighton and Seton Hall beat UConn. I'm going to laugh my ass off if they lose to Alabama. Well, with my luck, Bama will look like the 98 Bulls against UConn. Like, they'll, they won't miss a shot. Like, that'll happen because apparently, apparently I'm being punished for something. Um, I, I just feel like you can play really good and get bopped by 25 by UConn. You've watched it happen multiple times. Like, it just, I'm just yeah, watching at one the, point, the that, separation. The first half of the Illinois game, UConn couldn't make a shot. Well, what's Bama going to do with Klingon? You got to Pringle, I mean, Pringle's just got to... Pringles just got a jungle gym, a man. Like you really do. You just gotta like. It's swat almost to the, the point. Ball, and I was talking about this. And make it. A weird. lot of my good friends are Bama fans, and they don't know how to deal with this run. Like they don't. They don't know how to act. I, I didn't know like, how to deal. With I didn't. Yeah, I was the same way when Auburn was doing it. Like, it's almost. A, would you just play five out and shoot threes the entire game against UConn? Against UConn. Man, no. I just here's. I, I I don't think you beat UConn by doing something way different. I think you beat UConn just by doing the best that you know how to do. Is that way different from Alabama? I mean, no. I don't think it's running? way different. But uh, the way they're playing right now, physically, and and the ability to off. And I think look, 
Look, when you take that many threes, I do, I do think it helps you get more offensive rebounds. There's like more long offensive rebounds to get. But it just seems like Alabama has gotten almost every 50-50 ball in like these big games they've been playing in. Like it just seems like if they need it off a missed shot, they somehow find a way to get it. Or they knock it out of somebody's hands or something like that. It just it but then I look at UConn and I'm like, because UConn did not shoot the ball, like you brought up, Blaine. UConn did not shoot the ball well and just absolutely just ran away with the game. Like, like I, I don't know. I'm just, I've never seen this before. You've been up by 30 points in every tournament game. Just think about that for a second. Just think about that. That's insane. In, a, in Division I basketball, high-level Division I basketball, and Dan Hurley's still pissed. Yeah. Still pissed. All right, one more, then we're going to move. Uh, quickly, young NASCAR with a comment. He says, I personally think it's just awful what Zach Eady did to, did to Japan. Um, I agree with that. <laughs> Let's go to Jor. What's up, man? As a Bama fan, I'm just happy making it to the Final Four. Yep. Had Bama going to the Final Four and losing to UConn in my bracket. Wow. After being doubted every round, I'm to the point now, why not us? Yeah, uh, remember, if you do donate, that'll get read at the end if it's not on topic. All right, David, let's get into a little, you want to go best and worst? You want to go Final Four preview here? Yeah, we got to go Final Four previews, prediction, and bet. So we'll start with Alabama UConn. Like Blaine talked about, that spreads 11 and a half right Woo! now, which makes sense. I mean, you just talked about UConn being up by 30 points in every game they play. But this is the defending champ up against a team making their first Final Four appearance, and the over-under is 161 and a half. Over. Over. I like it, too. Now, and Because I think Alabama can score enough points to to feel more comfortable than than you know what Illinois did. Last game, I, it's going to be tough to go on a 30-0 running against Alabama just because they're able to score at the rim and they shoot so many threes. Eventually, they're going to hit a couple. I think the over is the best bet in this game. The 11 and a half, again, I I just like Mark Sears and them could go off and you still lose by 20. I just I look at UConn's size, I look at their their you know their depth, you know their guards. They've got some that are young, some that are old. Cam Spencer, a guy that I really like watching play, I. Again, I've got to go UConn. The over's the best bet, right? But give me, give me UConn to cover the 11 and a half, too. Okay. How do you feel over there? <sighs> this is one of those things where I, I'm in love and I hate the 11 and a half for Bama at the same time. Um, big number for a final. Four. Big number. I think I'm going to take Bama with 11 and a half because I think Bama just shoots really? too good from the clip from three. Uh, I really do. I think they're going to keep this game somewhat close. Uh, it looks like a seven, eight point loss to me. I mean, right now, if you're Alabama, it's got to be, what, what are you going to do with that thing down low? I mean, Pringle, Pringle, first of all, how healthy is he? If you watch that last game, his knee is banged up. It got worse throughout the game. Can he still have the same level of defense and effort walking in this game if you're Alabama? Because if not, you saw what happened to Illinois. Every time that guy was in, it was move, move, move our pieces. We're going to get him to the block. We're going to work it there. If you're going to double him, we're going to kick it out. That's what UConn's going to do. So, Alabama, you're going to have to decide if you're going to double him or let Pringle go to work on him because if you're Bama, you're not deep in the big position. If you get in foul trouble early, you will be in yeah. trouble early. Grant Nelson game. can't get too fouls. Grant he Nelson can't, can't get too early in the first. Like no. You have to play. Not only you can't shoot well, you can't foul, but you can't turn the ball over. You have to be perfect against UConn to maybe cover 11 and a half. Alabama has to embrace the underdog role. Like No one's going to pick you. Alabama fans listening, no one's going to pick. This is like when you're in the Final Four in football and you're matched up against Notre Dame or you make the Final Four like against Cincinnati a couple years ago. No one no one is going to pick you here, and it's understandable because UConn has been that dominant. Embrace that underdog role. I thought they did a great job of that against North Carolina. Yep. We were there for that one in person. If you, if you keep it close late, you have a chance, especially, I mean, Mark Sears is hitting shots from the logo. Yeah, that, was, nope. that was insane. I think he hit, what, five in a row, six in a row, something like that. Don't, look. You either have it in you or you don't. That's what March is about. You're either going to fold or you're going to prosper. And Alabama right now, the culture in that program is that when the moment's the biggest is when they're going to show up. And they've, they've continued to show that. I think that's the best compliment you can give Nate Oates. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you know, you look at what they've done in the regular season. You know, you look at what now they've done in the NCAA tournament. This man's teams play with grit. And when the moment is big, they come through. There's no, you know, and he bashed them all year on defense. We heard it all year. These guys either have to decide whether they're going to play defense or not. 
Well, it seems like Alabama stepped up when it matters the most, man. And like that's that's something that's in you. Got to have belief in that, belief in yourself, belief in in the style, belief in who you are as a team. So, I mean, that's I think the best the best compliment that you can give a coach is that your team steps up when it matters the most. And they're plus five fifty on the money line. Woo, God, I mean, <sighs> why not? Just why on. not just take just a little? I mean, you got to come out with a hot start. You got to come shoot good early. Well, you can, again, you can't come uh, out and shooting bad like you did against Grand uh, against Canyon. UConn. There's the it's it's not even just coming out like it's you got to play really good the whole time to have a chance just to have a chance they're gonna play good they're gonna play good so it's 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 gonna be fascinating to me pretty big spread in the second game as well North Carolina State plus nine right now against Purdue over under 146 so North Carolina State would be plus 340 on the money line for a team that's won what, nine games in a row? I mean, they were a banked buzzer beater against Virginia away from not even making this Oh, trip. I know. You know? Just, now look at the run they've gone on. Final four, 11 seed, and they're plus nine right now. Kevin Keats was going to get fired. You talk about clutch. You talk about coming through. We talk about players coming through in the clutch. Man, that was a clutch free throw. Man, that was a clutch stop. You want to talk about as a coach? Kevin Keats is about to get fired. Not now. At NC State. <laughs> you had to win. Now, now, you had to win your conference tournament. Make it the NCAA tournament. Hey, you know, hey, we're excited. You know, we're, we're not going to fire you. You don't have to put the real estate sign out in your front yard. Now, we're talking about going from getting fired to I'm, I'm going to need some more. We love him. Yeah, now he's just the, the bell of the ball. The bell of the ball. No, you can it, I don't know if there's a sport where you can go from getting fired to getting a raise quicker than in college basketball. Okay, they just win a conference tournament and then make a run. I mean, how many jobs have been won off one uh, been gotten, you know, at bigger places off one run? I watched Charlie Weiss get a raise after losing a game to USC. Dude, Charlie Weiss, I think uh, he had pictures of somebody. But, I mean, when you talk about DJ Burns, what he's able to do down low against Zach Eady, uh, the nine's a little bit surprising to me, especially the way NC State's been playing. I mean, they ran through Duke and North Carolina to win the ACC tournament. Okay, it's an ACC tournament, whatever. Now they beat Duke again. At some point, you're just better than them. Yeah, but Purdue's got that thing down low, Dave. That's the difference. That's the difference. Nine and a half. That's Zach Eady is the reason they're nine and a half point favorites. That's it. And if you're DJ Burns, look, I love DJ Burns. I love Horn. NC State's got some guys now. They know how to put the ball into the basket. But how can DJ Burns play with Zach Eady? Well, if DJ, and a lot of it's going to be how's this game refereed, all right? How many free throws is Purdue going to shoot? Well, it's how many times can I get Danny Cannell's nephew to run into Zach Eady to draw a foul so DJ Burns doesn't foul out? Because DJ Burns got two early in that Duke game, too, and then played well. Uh, Dude, smart he's down good. The stretch. DJ Burns' bag is D deep. His, that offensive bag is deep. You know who he kind of reminds me of? And Left it's, tackle. Well, well, that is a poll today. Could DJ Burns uh, start in the NFL? <laughs> Glenn Big Baby Davis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, and this guy be crazy. Oh, now he's bigger, like wider. That big baby was more muscular. And but it feels like DJ's got more touch too. Like he, no, well, like he feet. turns around, hits a fadeaway, he goes home and plays the harp. He had a floater yeah. yesterday. <laughs> he had you a know? floater. Yesterday. Like he said, he goes and plays the yeah, harp. Yeah, he turns out hits a post hook left hand and go home and plays the harp. <laughs> like he's that his touch is he's that big with touch. That's deathly terrifying. People. Yeah, it is. Doesn't yeah, it is. Like, like he's that he's that one guy that was. That kid growing up that was bigger than everybody else, but he could draw real. Yeah, he oh, like yeah, he yeah. could still draw. He, he could draw he like yeah, yeah he could like he he's huge and can play the violin. Doesn't it like, feel like no he sense. is like the hero of the tournament right now? Like yeah, he's, he's the American sweetheart of the tournament. And Zach Eady's kind of turned it into the villain. Like oh, they don't call fouls against him. He's just bigger than everyone. Now we get to see that matchup. Well, see DJ Burns like you can. I don't want to hear that. If I'm DJ Burns, I don't want to hear nothing about big. About <laughs> being bigger than anybody in this game. It's the goal is. Can you somehow, you're not going to stalemate with Zach Eady. That can be the goal. Good luck. Can DJ Burns score on Zach Eady? Can he score on him? Because if they don't have DJ Burns' offense, he kind of gets them out of those ruts, those scoring ruts. If, you know, the, the shots aren't falling or, or they're not able to score in transition, they just say, listen, here, big dog, DJ Burgers, baby. Like, I'm going to get it down here. I'm going to work. I'm going to work. I'm going to work. And then he's <laughs> right, left, fade away, into, and ones. Got a little jet. He hit a mid-range jump shot yesterday. I thought I was watching Bob Ross like paint a sunset over an ocean. <laughs> the uh, front court matchups we're getting this tournament are incredible. I mean, not just Zach but, and DJ Burns, but, but can I apologize to Purdue? Can, can I apologize yeah. to Purdue? Purdue, I'm sorry. 
I doubted him. I, d- I thought Purdue was going to be the first one seed out because the guard play. I can't believe it. Yeah, their guards have been playing good, and I, I still feel like we're headed for a Donovan Klingon Zach Eady matchup in the championship. Oh, it's Doesn't written like in the that. stars. If there's ever a time for Space aliens fight. to come watch Space a basketball fight. game, Space it fight. is now. Like they're they're going to be humongous. This is going to be a a great. If these two teams win, I wonder what the spread will be in this game. The the Garden of Eady versus the Klingons. I mean, the Star Trek told us this was coming. Like it's a space fight. Would, again, I think Blaine is 100% correct. Would anybody be shocked if at the start of that game, like you look outside and there's just saucers just hovering around? It's like, I'd pay the ticket. House, watching YouTube TV. I'd pay the ticket. That's definitely I really what they'd would. be using. That's what I think. But I, I'm, I'm going to go, what's the over-under? In which one? Purdue, the, NC State? 146. So Okay, 146. So give me the over in both both games. Me too. Give me NC <laughs> Give me NC State to cover plus nine and a half. Give me UConn minus eleven and a half. I mean, I'm just gonna oh, run with both the dogs here to cover their spreads. I don't know. I've been running with NC State. Took NC State plus seven and a half yesterday against Duke. Perfect. Been running with Bama. Been betting with Bama. It's a win-win situation for me, but they keep winning, so I'm winning money. Is my heart a little bit hurt? Yeah, that's fine. But the only thing that I can fix it is money. Yeah. Have you seen Betty cry on a jet ski? It's going pretty well right That's now. exactly right. You don't ever see it. How about you, producer Justine? You like NC State plus 340? I don't like it, David. I love it. Wow. <laughs> bye, 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 yeah, bye, how bye, are bye. you? How's it going, Justine? Like, how just are you just on cloud nine right now? This is so cool. I think you have no idea. I mean, it's been 1983 was the last time we even sniffed. Jimmy V. Oh, we, I kind of have an idea. We do have an idea. I have an idea. Yeah, yeah. From see this it past football year. season. But, uh, but we always talk different. about it's the girl in your bracket you know, who does the best, fills it out because she went to that school or her cousin used Colgate toothpaste or something. Now, Justine is crushing it. Not yeah, just Justine, where are you ranked? Justine right is now? ranked nationally because every year we say that and people are like, no, it'll this year it'll be more chalk. You know, like, she's leading the bracket. So I yeah. was 9,000th at one point, like out of the millions. That was on Friday, but now I'm at 485,000. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, so you blew down. it. So you blew it. Well, look I, at this. I didn't want you oh, yeah. Come All right, well, that was cool. Whatever, hey, guys. I just care about NC State now. Yeah, well, look, you, you guys aren't the same team you were 10 years ago, and guys, we know you're not the same guy you were 10 years ago. I know I'm not. No, you're not. All right, as we get older, let's be honest. You have a little less energy. Let's do the loss of testosterone, David, if you were wondering. I know you were. I was. You, and if you want to do something about it, which you should, I mean, let's figure it out. Let's get solutions. Let's not just talk about problems. Go get Nugenics. You'll feel revived, energized. You'll be working out like you used to, jacked and tan and the man with a plan. Why? Because Nugenics Total Testosterone Booster with Tesnor will help you turn back the clock and re-energize your life. And you can try before you buy. There's nothing to lose and everything to gain. New energy, muscle drive, and even more passion. Look, we're getting older, man. You want to feel good again in all areas? You want to get juiced up? You want to get excited about it? You want to hop out the bed like you're possessed? but in a good way, not in like this scary movie way. All right, go get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea when you text 231231 and you enter the keyword crane. So the number is 231231, then you just type in C-R-A-I-N. And if you text now, you'll get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo X, their newest and most powerful fat incinerator ever. You take it and that fat is out of here, mister. Booyah. And that's Tony Perkis. All right, key, they have the key ingredients to help you lose fat and get lean even faster. So it's 231231, enter keyword crane, C R A I N. Texting enrolls you into a uh, recurring automated text message, consent not required to purchase. Message data rates apply number one doctor recommended brand by primary sale physicians based on an independent survey conducted by IQVIA 2022. Not my fastest, but I'm not pissed about it. Skip to the Booster Club phone lines. Open here in about 10. Booster Club quickly, then best and worst. Ah, la, la, la. All right, $2 donation from our one and only heartbroken hog, sir. He says, DJ Burns is Zach Randolph's son. God, he's bigger than Zach. He's like wider than Zach Randolph. It's like if Zach Randolph a little ate bit like an extra lefty, plate. Both lefties. You know, no, I can, I can see, see the comp. The comp. I, I don't think it's comp. a bad comp. But I just DJ Burns is wider. So to Mr. Parker, he says, why does everyone believe Purdue's guards were smaller than Tennessee's? Uh, Ziggler is literally the head of the Lollipop Guild. Yeah, yeah outside of Ziggler, though, when you when you look at, at, you know, Braden Smith, not a big guy at all. Lawyer, not a big guy. Not that I'm not saying he's short. I'm not saying they're all short, but they're kind of thinner. You know, you look at a guy like Dalton Connect. You look at guys like Meshack, right? Even Ganey. 
I think it, I thought they were going to be able to get downhill more on Purdue's guards. Not that Purdue's guards weren't going to be able to score or they were going to get knocked off their spot the whole game. But let's be honest, Purdue did not shoot the ball well at, I don't, from three. I don't think their guards really outside of rebounding and keeping balls alive, they dribbled around and did what they had to do and was give it to Zach Eady. I mean, that was, that was what they did. It was on the defensive side for Purdue's guards where I was the most surprised. Nobody else from Tennessee did anything. Mm-mm. Did anything. I mean, at some point, I felt bad for Dalton Connect. Zach Eady, I mean, you're eight feet tall. I'd give it to him every time. Why would you not? Yeah. You know? But uh, that, it's just— We're seeing how dominant uh, someone can be when they're seven foot four in this tournament, obviously. But one of the cool things about basketball is it takes all types. Zakai Ziegler, like he was talking about, was five foot nine, and he was the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, which you should have mentioned. I have remember that story for another day. All right, let's go to Andrew S. Andrew, what's up, my guy? He says, let's be honest, guys. The biggest factor in the NC State-Purdue game is going to be how the refs officiate it's, the bigs. If Zach Eady shoots 20-plus more free throws, you got to get it for two points. I literally tweeted this out before the Purdue-Tennessee game, actually a day before. Most important you know, area is how the game gets officiated. because, And it's that's not just saying, are they calling a lot of fouls against Zach Eady? So, like, Zach Eady's going the foul line. It's, are they calling fouls on Zach Eady when he's on defense? I thought there were times where he pushed off for rebounds that they didn't call multiple times. I thought there was some, you know, quote unquote, hand checking that they called when Zach Eady was shooting that they didn't call when he was defending. Um, now, that's not to take away anything. I mean, the man was dominant. The man was absolutely dominant. And he didn't make, didn't shoot extremely well from the free throw line. He could, he could have gone for 50, if we're being honest. But if they're not calling fouls when Zach Eady's on defense and you're just, you're screwed. That that side of that you can't run the ball. Like that's the best way I can put it. Let's go to Tim Cornet. Timmy, what is up? It says, don't forget Oakland had 12 seconds and the ball to beat NC State. They were so close, we almost had it. Yeah, the Golden Grizzlies, which is one of the coolest <laughs> mascot names I've ever heard in my life. All right, phone lines open up here soon. Let's get to a little best and worst here, David. What do you guys got? Mm. Oh, I can start, start with us. mine if y'all want to. Oh, you start probably us. heard of this, but the women's game between NC State and Texas out in Portland, and we know Portland doesn't get a lot of things right, that's just in general. The three-point lines were different <laughs> from each side. When did you they had it? one job, and a lot of games got played in this on this court before it even got noticed. Really? A lot of games. There are matchups before this in the same court where it didn't get noticed. But the coaches, the head coaches from each team, from Texas and NC State, paced off the three-point lines, and there are both different distances no from the goal. And still. And still played the game. Look at this. Uh, would you would you still play the game? Here's, here's why I would. Because both teams have to play on each side. This is why it's good that you switch sides. I, I believe, do they switch sides every quarter in the so. women's if game? If not, you'd have to. Yeah, they, but they play four quarters. As long right. as we play an equal amount of time on each side between both teams, I don't think that that you sit here and say the game's null and void. Where, where it would have been a problem is if you would have noticed it like halfway through the first quarter of a game, right? And then they had to stop the game and re-mark it off and mark the lines where it's even. Then I would have been like, well, we have to start the whole game over because they've been playing on a shorter three-point line than what we have. And now it's going to be even the rest of the game. So they actually had an inherent advantage for a certain amount of time. That's where I think they kind of dodged a bullet here. But this is laziness. This is laziness. You know what it really makes me think? How many times has this happened? I, not only just in the women's It's gone unnoticed? But, and it's gone unnoticed. Like, but don't you think it would have to be really a really, really small difference for the shooters not to notice? Because when you shoot as many three-pointers and as many shots as these players do, there's no way you don't notice, right? That looked pretty significant right there. Like it did, well, like the distance in between like the top of the key, like where that white was, mm-hmm. looked, looked pretty significant. But how many games in the men's too? I would just wait till after the game and see like, hey, how did we perform? Did we win? Okay, it was. Oh yeah, we, either we, that or we lost. Uproar. Two minutes left in the fourth. I don't care if we're down thirty. Uproar. Game doesn't count. Yeah, doesn't erroneous. Count. Game erroneous does not count. count. I just don't know how. I'll leave it the poor. I'll tell you that. But my best, obviously, the Yankees. It's one oh, of those things hot. where I don't know what brought more yeah, joy, brought more series. joy to my heart watching the Yankees win 
are just watching the Astros lose. <laughs> it's beautiful. It is poetry. I walked outside, birds were flying around. One landed on my finger. I was like a Disney princess. Juan Soto is pretty good. Yeah, Juan Soto. He's pretty good. Yeah. How, how is he a Yankee? Well, what do you mean, how is he a Yankee, want? Dave? Because he loves New York. We love him. He was a Padre. Blaine's He's coming home. Yeah, Blaine's never been to New York, by the way. Place where we belong. Best, look, they great look good, coffee. Though. Is Great. this more about the Yankees are good World's right best now, golf. or are the Astros just, hey, maybe this is a down year finally? Because I don't believe it. I, I, see I it believe over the course of a season. Just said, can two things be untrue at the same time? Yes. Is that a real thing? Yes. I think, I think the, the Astros will be fine, and the Yankees will find a way to choke it. Uh, it's just, it's wow. so early for me right remember now. Remember, Dave. But... Remember, Dave. All right. Until apology gets made. Yeah. It's postseason darkness. They right. see an end blame. This Every just, day's an eclipse. This is the tease. Every day. Man, how about at one point this weekend, the white, every team in Major League Baseball had scored at least you a run, this. except the White Sox, who hadn't gotten past first base. That's no, just, they don't. I don't know if that held true yes, in yesterday's Oh, Ben. Games, but. It's bad. Oh, That's Ben. Bad. It's bad. That's bad. That's Sorry, Ben. Good. It's bad. That's tough. Uh, my best. Look, love her, love her, love him or hate him, love her or hate her, talking about Don Staley. South Carolina's women's basketball team is 36 and 0. That's incredible. Like, that's just insanely tough. Uh, it, look, it wasn't, they barely survived Indiana. Uh, it was a tight game for, for a little bit against Oregon State. Uh, and, and one of the best names in sports, Reagan Beers, the center for, for Oregon State. They made a little bit of a run uh, from the three point line there at the end. But, and Dawn Staley, she continues to say, like, the best thing we do is they practice against, they're called the highlighters. They're guys. This is what I would do if I was a women's coach. Like, in basketball or anything where men play the same sport. You know, obviously on, on a different side of the pendulum, at least how it should be. But we would just practice against guys. She's like, literally, we will not face anybody better. So that's, it's just, a, and I know lots of people do it. right? I think Pat Summit did it when she was at Tennessee. It, obviously, Kim Mulkey does it. Uh, but 36 and 0, when there's a, a target on your back, right? Even though South Carolina's just better than pretty much everybody and they're deeper. I mean, we'll see with the I Iowa plays LSU tonight. Uh, but I, I just think that's incredibly impressive to me. And my worst, Cam Sutton. Mm. What are we doing, dog? Can and I want to make sure I get this right. I want to make sure I get this right. So he he just turned himself into police. Um he was on the run, basically, and he's facing a charge of domestic battery by strangulation, which is a third-degree felony punishable by up to five years in prison. That's what a sheriff's office spokesperson told ESPN, uh, that there was evidence of wounds on the woman's body. Remember, Sutton joined the Lions as an unrestricted free agent in 2023 on a three-year, $33 million contract after being at the Steelers' for his first six NFL seasons. The Lions released him in on March 21st, the day after they found out about the arrest uh, warrant. So... I mean, God, dude, what are we, what are you doing? I mean, I don't care who you are. You should never, and again, it's, you know, he's facing charges and, and we have due process here in this country, but this is true, dude. I just, I lose all respect for you, man. It's just. That was a tough story to read. Sad, and, uh, man. You, you had Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice is under investigation right now for potential street racing. Did you hear <laughs> about this? Do we have the video of that actually? It was a, a Corvette and a Lamborghini racing each other, and as someone who who has just won a Lamborghini in a bet this weekend. Yeah, uh, I mean, look at this. <laughs> look at this. You know, how stupid do you have to be? What are we doing, man? Like, how stupid do you have to be? Is it just not good enough playing in the NFL and being rich? Is it just not good enough? Got, got an incredible life ahead of you. You got to go race on the street and hit a van. He balled for the Chiefs this year, but... like, No, it's not that, I mean... Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say. I mean, I don't know what all the details are. He hasn't he hasn't turned himself in yet, so we'll see. Uh, uh, street racing? I you know you know I don't condone street racing, but you know who probably should be street racing? I don't know street racers or Mike Winchell, who's in Fast and the Furious. So I know that's not that actor's name, but we all know who I'm talking about. Yeah, from Tokyo Drift. But I mean, I just think about it. What if it was my wife? Yeah. Then you hit my van. Like, I don't care what position you play, bud. Like, it just, I don't know. It's just stupidity to me. I mean, a lot of it has to do with who you surround yourself with. Um, especially you hit, to, you hit a certain status in life where you're making so much money, man. You have to surround yourself with the right people who want the right things for you. 
Rasheed Rice, not only did you put everybody's life in danger, man, you put your career in danger, dog. You put your career, everything you've worked for so hard in life, you put it in danger for some to dumbass street race. Street race. Yep. Like, who's your friends, right? If this was one of my friends, you'd have to stop me from wanting to kick his ass. Stop me from it. Who do you hang out with? That's what it comes down to. All right, my best of the weekend, a uh, little football. You guys say it's spring. Love that. Yeah, yeah. A little football, okay, in the it's UFL. Can you bring up this trick play, please, where one of the big guys, the center for San Antonio's team, got to score a touchdown. Run this. 58 is some kind of lead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Check Cobra. Check, check. check. Who's eligible? Uh, He's eligible. There's He's motion. Eligible. He's off the ball at the top. Uh, Look at this. Right down the middle of the got him. Right down the middle of the field. Go, big fella. Go score. Break one. Go score. Oh, we got Get some wheels there. on. Brad Come Wayne, on. The, the old LSU punter. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Extra dish at the buffet tonight, boys. This made it better, though. Pull up his interview with our good friend Cole Kublick. Oh, look Play at this. Cole. Do you have any idea the impact and what you've done for us fat guys everywhere? Um, I know it's all of our dreams. I know that we put that fake in and we talked about I was just more of a decoy, but, you know, stuff hit the fan and I was there. So, but it was, an, it's an, I love it for fat guys. <laughs> uh, now, now you got to run for office. Now you've got to run for yep. office. You, you've got governor of Texas. Board. Yeah. Now you run for, now you run for the Senate on behalf of, of the big uglies. But now I, I, I love getting weird on special teams. Y'all know that. Nobody gets weirder than me. The the center seam, though? Center seam? Look, and like he said, someone he was the deep Someone boy. was in their oh. office just cooking it up. Well, well now here's, what, here's what happened, up. and he admitted it. That was not how that play was supposed to go. This was, I, I promise you, this is how it went in that meeting room. All right, here's what we're going to do. Here's who's eligible. <laughs> Johnson, you're not going to get the ball. All right, you're you are a pure decoy. Just make sure you line up right. You know, let's let's just just make sure you drag that guy far enough across where we're able to open up that. You saw that slip, that guy coming back. That's where they're trying to hit, kind of on that little arrow, and uh, just the way it works out. And this is how football is, and how sports is. You just happen to be the one that's open. They messed up, but in a different way. That's why. Listen, if you stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. That's why I have more respect for everyone involved. I have more respect for the coaches knowing that he wasn't the primary option. Yep. Okay, I have more respect for the kicker who threw the pass. And look, he was ready for it. He's ready. But, but, but as a coach, like, it is such a good feeling because you get all the same amount of credit. Yeah, true. Because it worked. Maybe it didn't work exactly like when you thought you were going to pour it all in the same beaker together and it was going to create that, you know, concoction. But it still created a concoction that worked, and that's what counts the most. All right, last video of the day. Do we have the home run here from this weekend? That yeah, was, you were talking uh, that about That was this. going viral. Home run. Uh, guys, take a look at this here. Uh, this Eventually. created a bit of an altercation. Oh, yeah. He to left. He knew it. He stood at home plate. Catcher doesn't like it. Henry Hunter didn't like it. They run. The catcher for Orleans. All right, so here's the question, though, and we can't see from this angle, though. Obviously, he's standing at home plate just eyeing this homer for, for a long time, led to an altercation. Is he just looking to see if this ball goes fair or foul? And if he, if, if he is deciding if it's going fair or foul, is that acceptable? Let me see it one more time. Play it again. Can we play it one more time? I'll be able to tell you from the, from the front. See, even the umps. <sighs> he's looking to see if that ball is going fair. I, I think it's a mixture of both. I don't think I, I think he knows if it's fair, it's gone. Yeah. But the way the umpire is having to look at it too, and they're kind of following it the same. Like here, he's tracking it. Umpire's tracking it. He seems trying to kind of work the ball back, wish it back. And look, I, I think the catcher's right too. You think here's so? the thing: regardless fair or foul, you have no control over it. Now. True. So you might as well get into the jog. And look, I'm all for nice. It doesn't backflip. feel. I'm all like... for maybe a couple words, David. But I think once he realized it was gone and he was stuck there and the catcher, because the catcher's seen if it was fair or foul too. Yeah. But he's saying, the catcher's saying what I'm saying. You should run because you have no control. It doesn't feel right. like he's eyeing down a dead center homer though. Right? It, it feels different than that. But I mean, you want as much fighting as possible. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's the great thing about it. If you're going to pimp a home run, that's fine. You can have your moment. Just know next time you get up there, you're going to yeah, catch one right in the middle of the back. Or the head. It's the way baseball works. Handle it like a normal well, baseball well, player. It's a, it's a double-edged sword. You want to pip a home run? Well, here's a 96 miles per hour four seam. 
to the middle of your back. Well, the, feel. the worst part is not even when they hit the person that did it. It's when they hit the person that was on deck. Mm. When they, it's one thing, you know, if if you go down, ah, it's another thing. If like your boy goes down, like Raj, no, Raj, please, Raj. Raj was on deck. Raj was on deck, but like that's when, depending on how the game's going, you know, your boy just eats one right in like the spinal. But it felt like he pimped this a little bit. Because the way the oh, dugout really, react, you gotta move. the dugout react like they knew it was fair. Yeah. All right. Well, so you 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 held there for a second. Look, if you want to pimp it, I'm all for it. I'm all for the theatrics when it comes to baseball. It makes baseball better. Just know if you're gonna sign your name on that dotted line on pimping a home run, just know what's coming next. Yeah. Well, Carl Yastrzemski, I thought the home run he hit that hit the pole. Watch him. He hits it and he's tracking it, but he's moving. Mm-hmm. toward first base, right? And like trying to will it, you know, to go fair. A boy just stood at home and, and just, he was going to watch the whole show. And if you're going to watch the whole show, you better get ready to, to, for lack of a better term, catch these mitts at the end. Like, and that's what the catcher, it's, this is good baseball all the way around. Yeah. Though, I think. I I've hit a couple fun. down the line before where you know, you know if it's, if it's fair, it is gone. Yeah. But you also, it could be foul, and you're not going to run to first base if it's potentially foul. But my natural instinct was always just to run. I always wanted to, like, pimp a home run like this, but it was yeah. always just like, that's your first See, instinct. Yeah, it's, it's, which is a good instinct in baseball. I haven't hit enough home runs in my life to know the feeling that yeah. I can pimp. To, like, Barry right. Bonds. Barry Bonds would just swing and just stand there. Well, there How was many home well, runs yeah, have you I've like, ever? <laughs> that, when I was playing, like, in growing up, there was pimping home runs, but now it's just... Like a whole new level. Yeah. Like it's like, and like pitchers didn't yell at hitters. Like this whole like consistent like pitchers like yelling at batters like in high level college baseball. You don't really see it a lot in the, like too much in the majors, right? Just like you don't see like what you just saw too much in the majors. Like it'll be so, you know, somebody will do it every now and then. But like it just, it has taken such a whole new it has gone to such a whole new level of pimping home runs and pimping strikeouts. Like, the, the strikeout pimp is hilarious to me. Well, people have to realize pitchers are insane people. Insane people. <laughs> Some of the craziest people I have ever met in my life. Like, the, thing, the, the way these guys move, the way these guys, like, do things in general, just that's why you see... Guys who can throw nine, you almost have to be insane to throw 97 miles per hour. Yeah, well, it's they almost say, you know, they talk about golfers. They're like, look, these guys are very, some of them are very hard on themselves, and some of them are honestly pretty psycho. Pitchers are like that, but even less refined. <laughs> like, there's nothing scarier than getting in the box with some dude that you know is insane pumping 95. And that goes to another level when you're talking about closer. Oh, John Rocker? Insane. J- John Rocker sprinting full speed from the outfield. You're out. To throw 100. <laughs> You're out. From the left side. <laughs> and, oh, and he's also racist. <laughs> like, that just... <laughs> like, if I, if, like I got the, if I got the box and saw Ibram Kendi up there and he's throwing 104, Ooh. and I'm white, come on, man. I'm wearing, I'm wearing it right in the shoulder. It's tough. Like, can you imagine... If Aroldis Chapman was like clinically insane, though in like 105. Yeah, probably. Oops. Sorry, I threw it through you. Legal, legal. License to kill. All right, chat. And make sure you're hitting that like, hit that subscribe button. Let's go to Mr. Carter. What a Wayne song. He says, Do y'all think the LSU Iowa game will get a little chippy tonight? And are you going to watch? It's going to get Be chippy. honest. It's going to get Be chippy. honest here, okay? Because I know when you're lying, you're not going to watch it. I'm going to watch it, but I may not. You're not going to watch well, here's, it. Here's why I am going to watch it, because I'm betting on it. And oh, you took it. I took both the games. There's two. There's some great women's basketball. Nice. Like, this is this is the women's basketball I'll watch. I may, I may turn this on. Like, L- Caitlin Clark versus Kim Mulkey and LSU, right? Which, by the way, that Washington Post story, <laughs> boring. Oh, nothing yeah. burger. Absolute nothing burger. Of They'll keep coming they after her, though. Huh? They'll keep coming after her. Oh, for sure. The timing of it's just shocking, right? They release it right before LSU plays. But no, I will watch uh, for sure LSU Iowa just to see this Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark. And again, they've come out and said, listen, we don't have any beef, which is what everybody that has beef says, like, you know, before mm-hmm. the game. 
Uh, I will watch this because I'm betting on it. I may have to check this one out. Also, for another reason, I found out some information last week from my brother Todd. Flage Johnson for LSU, who's on all these commercials getting yeah, the NIL him. deals, is the rapper Camouflage's daughter. I had no idea. And, and maybe the maybe around. now that we're 20 years removed from his death, the percentage of people listening right now who actually know Camouflage is smaller. I'm just telling you, he was from Savannah. Like, we listen to Camouflage. Somebody on social media will be like, David. Oh, he told me he wrote, right he wrote He's with Pastor Troy, right? Uh, not with Pastor Troy was in Atlanta, Cam Plage was in Savannah, but because they, they were both yeah. rappers in Georgia, that was yeah. the majority of what we were listening Campbell to Plage. in high school pregame. He was shot in Savannah walking his son when he was 21 years old, and his, his I guess, fiance or baby mama or whoever was three months pregnant with a daughter. That daughter was born six months after his death. That's Flage Johnson. That's and wild. the kid who jumped over yeah. the, the table baby. the other yeah, day to brother. defend her, I think that's the brother who Camouflage was walking with. That's Camouflage's son. So. And everybody's from Statesboro. That's what I'm learning. Everybody's from Statesboro. Is Statesboro. everyone? We're growing. Yeah. Right. Let's go to Maximus 1318. It's either watch that game or the Mets. I'll choose women basketball every yeah. time, unfortunately. Well, I mean, it's... it's <laughs> I mean, Mets not off to not off to a hot start. You know, I'm just waiting for Ryan Gade just to get in here after, you know, the Phillies should have got swept. By the Braves, if we're going to be honest here, David, with with what went on in opening day, um, or excuse me, opening weekend. But uh, no, look, Braves win a series against the Phillies. The Mets struggle. Yankees swept the Astros. Not worried about the Yankees. Dodgers four and two. You know, Shohei did pop out uh, with uh, the winning run on base. So. That happened, but no, it's, it was a good opening weekend. Oh, I also heard that Rasheed Rice, uh, since we brought him up earlier, Rasheed Rice said his interpreter was driving the car. And yeah, him, yeah, so. yeah. Me so sorry. Oh, I me so sorry. <laughs> literally, you guys, <laughs> the hardest I laughed, the hardest I've laughed in a long time, and I've laughed pretty hard on this show, and I don't know why it's so funny to me when <laughs> he's talking about the interpreter. <laughs> Looked at Shohei and said. Me so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but we're literally in the in the airport. Yeah. And we're like, what are we gonna eat? We're like, what are we gonna eat? And LAX. And Blaine's like, why? We <laughs> You can do it, dude. We, we walk by these Chinese soup plates. And we're like, all right, we'll get this. And I don't know why this is so funny to me, but I'm in the middle of eating. My general sounds chicken. <laughs> and Blaine's sitting next to me there for and he just looks and he goes, Oh. He goes, Man, that looks good. That looks so good. He said, he said, Man, that looks so good. You got the meat so soft. Was it good? <laughs> it was okay. For airport for food. For airport food, yeah. What, I shouldn't have got it. It was I'm just good. not a big oh, LA guy. Just man. the fact that he just called it. Me so sorry, just so casually. Like, that's yeah. 100%. Well, can I get some it. bourbon chicken? Can I get some orange chicken and the side, uh, side of the me so sorry, please? Can I get that? That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be great. All right, let's go to JC. JC, what's up, my brother? So how do you guys feel about them dogs in the NIT against Seton Hall? Mike White. Congrats. Tell you, man, Georgia, I say it every year, and they finally started to live up to in football. At what point is Georgia just going to become the most dominant athletic program in the country. I mean, per capita, and I, per capita, I will take the state of Georgia in all three of the major sports from a high school talent level. Yeah, you will. Basketball, football, and baseball. Why would I not? Why would I not? Cam Newton tried to tell y'all, and I know he's from Georgia. Shout out College Park. But College Park. how Georgia <laughs> is, and you look at the baseball <laughs> team. There it is. Look at the baseball team. <laughs> look at Georgia's baseball team. Charlie, Con Charlie Condon's hitting disappear balls. Charlie. I, th I think he may end up being the number one pick, as crazy as it sounds. But at some point, they're going to get it humming in all three. And if they get that that monster started outside of this football, it's going. speaking of Godzilla, versus going to be Georgia versus everybody else. Georgia Tech that, used got, to be good at basketball. Georgia Tech and Wake Forest. Yeah, but you really got to like, you got to be like but, really. Dude, I have like, I know this time, but football had to sear to my brain. That the, one of the coolest games I went to was Auburn, Georgia Tech. At Auburn, when they had Reggie Ball and Calvin Johnson hmm. on the same team, Auburn yeah. lost that game. Calvin Johnson was so good. Yeah, yeah. was so good. Calvin Johnson was good, but we we threw like I think Brandon Cox was young and threw like three picks in that game. And I was like, oh, it's gonna be really hard for me to trust you. And then I was like, Brandon, I trust. Yeah, Brandon figured it out. Yeah, he did.
All right, boys, lines are full. All right, let's get to it. Let's them. get him in here. Let's go to King Don in Little Rock. He's a king year old. and a Don. King Don. What's up, man? Hey, y'all. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So last time I called, I didn't really hear this at the time because Blaine was interrupting David. But, uh, Blaine <laughs> the said usual. that Jordan Love savage. sucks. And you know what? I decided to be be a man, at least a young man, to come on the show and you know what, Blaine? You're right. <laughs> okay. April Fools. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you think now? Do you think any? Do you think about anything else than Jordan Love and making fun of Justin Fields? That's all no, I that's need. About it. Uh, and listen to what I'm about to say. Y'all's quarterbacks are Peyton Thorne and the RC Cola version of Justin Fields and Robbie Ashford. I agree. Well, well Robbie Ashford is in South choir. Carolina now. I think. Uh, they, they're King Don. Yeah, get your facts oh, straight, no, bud. going to run the ball like Justin Fields what? instead of throwing it. What, King Don, what do I have to do for you to forgive me of King what Don, I don't said forgive about him. Jordan Love? Don't forgive him. Hey, nothing. he said the same say thing. Nothing, no, I didn't. King he said the same no, thing. Everyone nothing. on this set said the same thing. No, I didn't. But you want to come after me? That's fine. I said Look, he needs time. if I have to be the one the, to, to make you feel better about yourself, King Don, I'll be that guy for you. Look, you have a bright future ahead of you, all right? I need to see what grades we're making in school. What's that chemistry grade looking like right now? See, huh? now it's just weird. Like, Blaine's slowly trying to get into the Zodiac Killer. Like, don't tell him where you live or, like, what school you go to. Now it's weird. Yeah, no, that sounds like a bad idea. I don't want to yeah. start yeah. sending yeah, it's weird now. now. It's yeah, you start oh, sending you Sudokus. Well, uh, yeah, I will say, y'all got this one quarterback, Walker White, coming in. Yeah, um, he, he needs he plays some. At the, he actually plays at the uh, one of the Christian schools nearby. Granted, there's only, like, 600 people there. But still, they nearly uh, they went to the 6A state championship as a school of like 600. They got their butts kicked, but still, he's pretty good. He torches up. My school's got nearly 3,000 kids, and he torches us every single year. He won like 42 to 6, and they put in their third strings in the last 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I again, I hope he's the guy they're able to ease along. You know, we'll see what happens with, with Peyton Thorne. And look, yeah. Hank Brown, there's some other guys in that roster too, but I think he is – the, the quarterback of the future for Auburn. I, I, I'm a big believer in names, and it's, it's hard yeah. to be named Walker White and be bad. Like, it's just it's oh, yeah. hard. And Blaine, um, have you contacted any of the Yale basketball players about helping uh, you out with your practice? I heard they're really good at that. See, that one hurts me too, King Don. That one, that one, that one hurts oh. me. Hey, King Don, y'all, did you, did you have spring break already, bud? How was it? Look at Blaine it trying to be good. not I friends. To, uh, it was good, sweet. No one cares. Get off the phone. Home of the <laughs> actually good teams. Where'd you go? Arizona, home of actually good basketball teams. There you go. Hey, and baseball teams. Go. World Series, well. Runner-up. Runner-up. Yeah. yeah. Right, World Series. I wish SMG. nothing but the worst for you and oh, yeah, Jordan Love. the Rangers Love. won that. that yeah, Cone yeah, State. They did. Last year was pretty good for me. I'm, I'm also a Rangers fan. It's, my, my teams are a little weird, but, man, we got uh, another – third straight good quarterback and my team won the world series despite me watching like three baseball games every year and all of them being the world series so there you oh, go that's look, a win hey, that's king don thanks for, king for don. calling buddy and thanks Appreciate for keeping it, us straight man yeah, you keep man. us in line hey you enjoy home room here in about 30 no, yeah. minutes all right <laughs> no problem let's go to <laughs> timothy <laughs> timothy in green bay timothy what's up down in maine hey how you guys doing what's, what's up al Khalib? what's it what's it called Blaine? What's up? how are you what? tim Timmy, how are I'm you doing, doing brother? You? Good, brother. From I'm Jim. doing great. I moved on. Brewers Nation time. 3 0 start. Hey, yeah. Yeah. let's go. Thank you. Beating the Mets. Back Brewers. like you never left. Oh, yeah. Craig Council, who? Do you guys see Reese Hoskins trying to just fight everyone on the Mets the entire weekend? I didn't see that. I, I did, love I did it. I did not see that. Now, he, he slid into Jeff McNeil and then gave him the wham wham face and then ah. made it the next day. Legend. Was that at second base? There was a game he where the second base. Yeah. yeah, he sl- oh yeah, he he was trying to take that guy out a hundred percent to take away the double play. That's how it started. That's part Good. of the game. See, that's Good. part of the game to me. Mm-hmm. But see, like if I'm gonna take that you was- out, that's what that's what got people to not block the base. Now they're like, oh well, you're just out because you were in front of the base, so you're out. That's what makes the theatrics in baseball great. Sliding through second base, spiking somebody. Part of it, you man. Know, pimping a home run. <laughs> Hitting the guy next time comes the little intricacies when it comes to baseball is what makes baseball. Hey, have you right? have you been to a game at Miller Park? Uh, Miller Park, yeah. God, I want to go. I want to go. I want to see him go down that slide and drink a beer. It's like I want to go it's sit awesome. at like a pub 
in England. My first the first game I ever went to when I was a kid was the game when we clinched the division back in 2010. Oh, so wow. That's wow. Cool, man. That's great, dude. Well, good start. It's a good start. What's the next then, series? What's the next series you guys got? Uh, I think we have the Twins, so state rivals. Mm, yeah. Twins. And then, hate, uh, hate, 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 hate. Yep. And then on Wednesday, I'm actually going to be in your great state of Tennessee. Really? What yep, you doing down I'm here? see my friends. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, yeah, dude. Come nice. live it up for a little bit. Be a city boy. City boy. Hey, city Timmy's candidate. a city boy. Yeah, city, <laughs> boy the city boy, the city boy. You Broadwaying it up, Tim? Uh, I don't know about that, but maybe. Oh, well, mm. Look, man. Leave, them, broad- look, leave them Broadway girls alone. Look. Blade will be out there. <laughs> I'll be out there. Yeah. Blade will be out there spinning us on. <laughs> look, I do it great. They don't pay me enough. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, Timothy. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Right, you yeah. Go Brewers. All right, let's go to Kirk in Canada. Kirk. Aha! Thank you, Liz. Hey, boys. Kirky. How's it going today? Good, man. Going loving, good. Loving man. this nice, yeah. Loving this nice spring weather up here in Canada. It's like above zero today. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, this somebody... morning when I walked out of my car, I I didn't shiver, which was great. Now I know. Again, it's 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 seven degrees where you're at, but here it's starting to warm up too. <laughs> zero being thirty-two. Just so anybody does get confused oh, there. But yeah, uh, I forgot you guys count. <laughs> don't say it. Don't say it. So listen, I'm going to talk two things about hockey real quick before we get to our next caller. Number one, the uh, the uh, NHL team that plays their home games in Philadelphia lost to one of the worst teams in the league the other night, the Chicago Blackhawks. So that Where are we at? Like I tell you what. Oh, how many, games games? how many more games do we got? How many more games? I tell you what. Flyers. A month left. Is today one of those days everyone's still calling and talk shit to wow. Brian. Right, I love it. Seven and Let's nine. do it. Long seven season, Kirk. Games. Hey, we still got some time left, buddy. So it's right. 12 and a half. You, you, only got, you guys got seven games left to play. You got some making up to do, buddy. <laughs> and the Leafs are on fire. I'm not worried. Do I look worried? Yeah. <laughs> if you're on audio, Blaine does look worried. Yeah, Did Austin bit. Matthews hit 70 goals yet or what? Uh, interesting. That was the second thing we were going to talk about. Uh, mm. He became only the ninth player in NHL history to hit the 60-goal plateau for multiple seasons on the weekend. Hmm. Wow. So I don't know if he's going to hit 70 because we only got nine games left and he needs to score 10 goals. He's hit and more his, goals uh, than Tony Robbins. Playmaker, his playmaker, Mitch Marner, is uh, hurt with a high ankle sprain, so I don't mm. think it's going to happen. But, hey, mm. we'll take 60. Yeah, that's a good That's a good year. <laughs> he's actually on pace to, uh, to uh, at, at this point in Alexander Ovechkin's career, He's mm. actually got more goals than Ovechkin did. So watch out for Austin Matthews down the road. He might be Look. going after some big records. Y'all got past the first round last year. Y'all get past the second round this year. Who knows? Katie bar the door. Well, we'll have to see. We got a our goalie situation concerns me. Although we did get a three nothing shutout the other night against. Uh, I just why would you Buffalo? not go sign the fattest person in Canada and just <laughs> shove their fat ass in the goal? <laughs> Like how oh, is that not the greatest strategy ever though? Look, it's like getting the biggest player in basketball. It's, it's like getting strategy. Zach Eady. <laughs> Why would I, I not? I agree. I mean, even if I had to tape like an elephant in there, I mean, just put some pads on him. You know, won't be able to tell. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I nobody thought of that before. You guys might be onto something. We'll see. Look, I know you can find him. I see him on TikTok complaining about can't fit on the plane. Yeah, or on a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Put one of them in the goal. Put Gorlock in the goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, put Gorlock in the goal. Shape like never a goal. score. Never score. You'll never <laughs> score. I just hope I get the puck back. It's pure physics. I mean, <laughs> I just hope I get the puck back. Appreciate it, Kirk. I'm gonna. I'll call in when the playoffs start, and I'll give you my playoff <laughs> predictions for the first round. How's that? Long, yeah, I still got some it, time Kirk. left to go, Kirk. Don't, don't. And watch Count Dark your eggs before they hatch, Kirk. Watch Dark Knight on the plane, Skyhook. There you go. Watch Skyhook. the real thing. Out of there. The real All thing. All right, boys. See you, Kirky. Take it easy, man. All right, Ethan in Seattle. Ethan, talk to us. He's sleepless. Good morning. It is early, but it's a beautiful day. I'm going to go see the Mariners play Cleveland tonight. Let's go, Let's go yeah. dude. Let's go. Uh, but actually, I just wanted to talk about UConn because is this the most dominating college basketball team you've ever seen? Because that's the most <laughs> dominant that I well, can remember. The, the one I keep thinking about, and I think, 
you know, David, you'll remember it more. Blaine, you'll remember them, but, but, but not as much as David. It, the last team I can think about that was this dominant that I can remember was the last team that won two national championships in a row, and that was that Florida, Florida team. Yeah. With, like, Corey Brewer yeah. and Joe Kim Noah. And Al Horford and was on Al that team. And Al Horford, and, like, it just... And they all, like, came back to... And I'm missing, there was, like... It was like a little white guard they had. I can't remember his name. Was an absolute dog. Uh, that's the last. That Kentucky team with Anthony Davis was really dominant. Yeah, and think about the Kentucky yeah. team that went undefeated the whole season. Didn't even make the championship that year. I know. They lost in the Final Four. So what? What UConn's Bro. doing is pretty incredible. Well, it's like they're I mean, doing it without like a super. Like they're doing it without like one a Zach Eadie or an yeah. alien. Not that. They have a bunch of really, really, I mean, really, they have one really of the best good bigs players. In the I mean, he's <coughs> no, they do, well, but like, yeah, that's but... the thing. It, it, it kind of blows my mind because I, I ran <coughs> the numbers yesterday, and and their average margin of victory going back to last year's tournament is twenty three point one points per game, wow. which is wild even in itself. But then, like, I watched them play. Like, I watched San Diego State and Illinois both lose to them, and it's like I watched the game and. I don't feel like their 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 opponents are even playing that bad. Like I watch Illinois, it's no. like that's yeah, they're a whole not point. A lot of shots, but they're not playing that bad. And then their dominance sneaks up on you. Look up the scoreboard. It's like, oh look, they're up by thirty points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what uh, that's what I've been saying. I watched Northwestern not miss a shot in the second half. Yep. Not miss a shot. A three. Everything was going in. They lost by sixteen. You come with three from seventeen. Well, like from when the you three talk point about line team, and one by thirty. Team ball. Like how to play. Yeah. UConn just, they play the best as a team. Like, I know that's a very simple and obvious and generic thing to say, but how does that happen, like, the way you're describing it? And you're not having a guy that's going out there and pouring 40 in a game. Like, it's not like Dalton Connect's going there and dropping 45 a game. It's yeah. just, that's how they're destroying people. True. Just everybody's playing good. Just everybody play good. Or take advantage yeah, of, of where you real. need to take advantage. I... I should I should have just taken them to repeat. I uh, I picked Auburn to win my bracket, so I might have jinxed y'all guys. Yeah, never pick us in anything postseason. <laughs> we'll do it in the regular season. We'll give you the regular season of your life, buddy. We get in the postseason. Well, well, it's here, Drew Barrymore. Here, here's the next year. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully some guys leave Utah and someone else can have a chance. Well, have yeah. you seen what? <laughs> Wait, Ethan, you picked Auburn to do what? I picked Auburn to win the tournament. Hmm. Well, I mean, look, well, couldn't Cam, win a game. Cam Spencer, yeah, couldn't win a game in the tournament. Cam Spencer, freshman, right? You've got, uh, I think, Newton, maybe a Newton or Castle, one of those guys is a freshman. Now he will see where they go in the NBA, but like, I, if you just, go back and watch, Coach Hurley had an interview when he was at UConn early and he lost a game and someone asked him a question. He looked at him and said, Y'all better enjoy him now. Yeah. Said you better enjoy him while you get him right now. Terrifying. Because he says because it's coming, and he was right. And he was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and hell's coming with me. Yeah, but it's we'll like see. it's like a Jason Statham movie. Yeah, you know, like why does get scissor kicked to the he's face? He's like, sorry, I'm at, I'm in retirement. Yeah, but now I'm what's, the what's the job? What's the job? <laughs> what's the job? <laughs> it's electric. What's the job? What's, what's the, the job? job? <laughs> Great call, man. Appreciate, Appreciate it, it, Ethan. All right, hey, let's guys. go to Kevin yeah. in Pennsylvania. Kevin, how you doing? How we doing, fellas? What's, What's up, up, Kev? Man? Hey, so you guys told me to call before opening day. Wasn't able yeah. to, but how about them Pittsburgh Pirates? How about them? Mm -hmm. Hey, uh -oh. look, good start, uh -oh. Eaton, man. Good start. Uh oh, excitement. Just, just the question is, Central. when does it fall apart and you start shipping all the good players away again? <laughs> like, at what point is that? Uh, is that probably two or three months away. So yeah, <laughs> I'm just enjoying it while it lasts. You know. Yeah, no, nah, man. Um, look, and again, you want to get excited early, and you should. Mm -hmm. Right? I just, this is the the greatest part about there being 162 regular season games in baseball is that if you don't start off well, you got plenty of time to come back. The problem is if you do start that's off well. if you're a Pirates fan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. In the season now. Yeah, yeah, end it now. COVID. Playoffs. COVID. No, uh, look, it's, it's, a, it's a good start. Just got to continue to find ways to win close ball games. That's what it's going to come down to, to uh, for the Pirates. Absolutely. You guys are Braves fans, right? Yes. Yeah, they are. Yes, we no, all are. No, they're not. We all are. They're not. Yes, Kevin. Yes, yeah, we are. Jake Kevin. is a Braves we're fan. All yes, we're all Braves For some fans. reason, Jake still claims David uh, <laughs> as a Braves fan, which is sickening to me, to be honest. But David's a Rangers fan. He's I'm in the reserve. Fan. David's in the reserve Braves fan. So. He's not Look, like the first. In, uh, PA. 
thank you for ruining all my Philly, uh, Philly friends' day. I appreciate that. You hey, know. look, no um, I'm just waiting on Ryan Gade. I just haven't heard. You know, I haven't haven't heard from Ryan Gade. There's today. a donation in. Oh, there's there's something there's in. Oh there's wow. A donation in. Oh there's wow. A, you know, you want to go and get to you want to go and get to while we're talking about the Phillies, just Ryan, real quick. Oh, uh, you want me to read his donation? Yeah, yeah. let's go ahead, Ryan. Read his donation. It. Uh, it's a five dollar donation from Ryan Gade. Okay. Philly's pitching was more of a disaster than that bridge in Baltimore. But, hey, they took one of three. A bit rusty, but only one game back. Next year is in July. It all matters in the postseason anyways, babe. I, and, Ryan, listen. Number one, I respect you for coming in here, donating after after losing the series. And you're right. The Braves versus the Phillies in the regular season, that hasn't been – that's not been the the entree that I'm looking for. That's not the filet, right? That That's not the oh, – oh, oh. Wow. Which is French for the best dish. Pass I don't think it is. No, it is. It is. Read a book. Do, okay. do, do a lingo. How does it go again? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Sounds like a great dish. It is. It's fantastic. But I'm going to pass. It's, yeah. We got to get past the Phillies when they sneak their way in. We don't play again until July? A division matchup? I'm not even worried. I, yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I feel like the SEC schedule makes We'll play again for that. three months. Hey, you know what else happens in July? July 4th? No. Independence oh. Day. It does, though. That does happen, but you know what happens. What? New NCAA game. Yes, yeah, true. Suppose, allegedly. 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 Yeah. Just, Anybody can I, drop a trailer. Okay. Anybody can drop a trailer. Kevin, are you going to buy that new NCAA game or what? Uh, absolutely. I've been Good. Looking for a while. Can't wait to run you, Kevin. Yeah, we'll We're see. We're going to see if you know how to stop the power, yeah. Kevin. Step in the arena like Gilbert Arenas. We'll see. Hey, they better have legendary teams. Um, I love that. Being the Pit Panthers every single time. Larry uh, Fitz? Jimmy Kenny Pitt. Darrell? Every day of the week. God, what game did they have where you could go back and redo moments? Kenny Pickett. Get that Dan Marino on there with Pitt. I think it was, wasn't the last one that came out, was it? I think it was the one before that. I'm aware Dan Marino is a much better choice, but I'm, mm. I'm a little biased. Look, Pitt's, Pitt's got some stuff. Do you go back and If Pitt's you put history. together Pitt's all-time greatest team. Even though, Kev. It's I've, incredible. Yeah, I, like, Kev, I do feel like I was the only one out here telling the truth about Pitt last year, and I caught a bunch of hell from Pitt fans for predicting that. We all saw how that went. Yeah, Pitt fans are definitely pretty obnoxious and stupid when it comes to hearing that their team sucks, but that's just how it goes. Part of it comes comes with the deal, but Kev, appreciate you. Appreciate it, Kevin. Appreciate it, Kev. Tell uh, Wiz Have Khalifa one, we fellas. said what's up, all yeah, right? Yeah, tell, tell Wiz we said what's up. All right, let's go to Josh in North Carolina. Josh, what's up? <laughs> Josh. Oh, how man, you doing, Josh. times in the neighborhood. Na, 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 na. It's tough, man. Uh, yeah. So, um, I, I spoke with my attorney, and uh, he, <laughs> he greenlit this uh, lawsuit I got against uh, David Cohn. So, uh, David, we'll see you in court uh, next week. Uh, <laughs> emotional damage. Lower up, buddy. So, oh, and, and for, yeah. for what exactly? For uh, for me picking Tennessee to do something they've just, never done before and then them not doing it. Jinx in the team. You just do it every time. And, and you know what? I get it. You're married to an Alabama fan, so you want to just jinx Tennessee and – you know, one day they'll get over to hump. I don't know. I've always heard that, you know, I don't know, 24 years of my life. But, you know, yeah. maybe. Hey, you know what? Out. I had permission from Ron yeah. Slay to pick y'all. But like I said to these guys with yeah. Auburn, don't worry. It's a mistake I'll never, ever make again. All of the fans of the programs who are blaming me for jinxing them, just wait till the football predictions come out. Just wait. Y'all aren't <laughs> winning a wait. single game. Okay. No, I, I'm, so no, I'm so excited. I think we. I'm so excited from what you just said. I, I think we will actually get donations in the chat for David to not pick people's. Teams. I which, swear. At which case, who's the one really playing 4D <laughs> chess, huh? Yeah, no. I'm not here. Hey, capitalism. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm trying to make. Money. At that point, uh, you're like Wolf of Wall Street. How much level. you care about your? Team? That's like Wolf of Wall Street level. Josh, I'm going to be honest. So you kind of got the double whammy a little bit here, Josh. Here's let me ask you this: Is anybody beating UConn? Yeah. Uh, no, nobody's beating UConn. And uh, secondly, uh, I just wanted to congratulate PJ. I might give her a lot of hell, but um, me and my family we were pulling for NC State because did not want Duke to get to the Final Four, and uh, they, you know, NC State did it. And yeah, they did. Congratulations, Josh. Hey, you're a gentleman also, for that. Also, what also helps me uh, get over how bad my team did in the tournament was the fact I've been uh, betting lately. And um, I did what Jake did, and I've been asking my girlfriend because she watches a lot of hockey. And um, every time we pick a spread bet in hockey, we have hit it. We are 5-0 and nice. on the spread in hockey. 
So, nice. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I need to move it along. And I guess I guess like, I guess my bets I guess my bets just aren't good enough. Yeah, just not good enough anymore. Oops, <laughs> sorry, didn't mean to be up twenty units. Yeah, up twenty five <laughs> oh, yeah, units. Gosh, yeah, whatever, whatever, dude. Blaine did win the month. Blaine whatever, did win the month, dude. Which, uh, Incredible you, you performance, by the way. Legendary. <laughs> um, put out in the history books. I appreciate that. Twenty something units, man. I was gonna tell Josh something. I tell Josh, I totally forgot, man. Just tell you some of mine. I remember. I remember what I was going to say. Imagine having like not one team but two. You have two. One's a one seed. One's a two oh. seed. Neither has to play yeah. UConn, yeah. and they still don't get to the final. That's tough. Man. I remember what I was going to say. Tough. Now I, I think it's a compliment, and it's also an insult to NC State that North Carolina fans were rooting for NC State to win just because mm. they didn't want Duke to go in. I think that shows you who's the biggest rival. Yeah, they were rooting for y'all, Justin. Yeah. All that hate we have Whenever for North Carolina. Whenever we beat them, they're like, we're not rivals. But when we... Jake and I lose. saw it. <laughs> yeah. We saw it at our when we were watching. I, I mean, I don't think it's a crazy thing to say North Carolina State is not as big of a I mean, rival Kenny the Jet Smith is out here saying he won't even, it's he won't the even Michigan talk about It's the Michigan State to care. Michigan, Michigan, Ohio. That is true. It's it's the, is. They are the Michigan oh, yeah. State to Michigan, Ohio State. That is a great... Way hey, Justine, what do you care, though? Y'all are in the Final Four. Yeah, I don't care. Cares. Beat them all. Y'all beat them all already. Yep, they're not here. We're, the, we're still here, both women and men. Mid- women. That's right, the and women. Men. That's too. wild. Yeah. Their women are in the, the Final women. Four, too. Do it again, brother. Wow. Appreciate it, Josh. Keep betting, man. Betonline.ag. Yeah, all right, Josh. Yes, all right, boys. One more caller today, Matthew in Arkansas. Matthew, what you got? What's up, y'all? It is the heartbroken hog here. Uh, is that, that heart ever going to get fixed, Matt? Yeah. What do we got to do to fix your heart? We'll find out this upcoming season, you guys. Quit playing games with fans. Oh. Yep. But I wanted to ask y'all, I'm sure y'all seen my man, former champion at, at the University of Arkansas, Jerry Jones, he's been talking about not extending Dak Prescott and just letting it ride next year and see if he can actually do something in the playoffs. Do you mm. think he's going to follow through with that or what? Yeah. I mean, I mean, why wouldn't you? You're that rich. About time. Why would yeah. you not follow I mean, through? If it, I mean, sooner or later, like, you have to do something in the playoffs. That yeah. matter if you're and, the quarterback of the Cowboys. And right now, like, if I'm the Cowboys, I'm gunning the drafting Spencer Rattler. Well, well, it's uh, my, my whole point. Nobody is saying that Dak Prescott is a bad player. That's not what anybody's saying. All we're saying is he is not worth what y'all are paying him mm-hmm. after what he's done in the playoffs. And it wasn't just him, Right. The defense played awful as well. We're not saying it's just his fault, but what's been the common denominator over a long period of time with the Cowboys not having success in the playoffs? Been Dak. Like, eventually, show me who you are. I'm going to believe you. Yeah, it's one of those things. I don't think you should extend Dak, and I don't think Jerry Jones should extend himself. Well, <laughs> that's, he's going to extend himself. I he's think it's time to go down the river, Jerry. So it needs to be a Febreze brother situation. It needs to be a fresh start. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. And they're having to see these other teams, like in the NFC with the 49ers, paying a quarterback on a rookie salary who's getting them to the Super Bowl every year, and they can spend that money on the rest of the team. And they're thinking, all right, the proposition for Dak used to be, I'm the best quarterback in the next tier down, like right after the Josh Allens and Tom Brady's and Patrick Mahomes, I'm the best quarterback. Well, now you're having to pay him so much money, and you're still not getting the postseason success. It's like, why not let it ride by drafting another quarterback? Mm. I couldn't agree more, guys. I've been wanting them to move on from Dak for like a couple seasons now. I didn't really want him. I didn't think they should have paid him after his rookie deal was over, to be honest. But Yeah, and there, if there's ever a draft to get a quarterback, it's this one. Yeah. A lot of it was he came in and did really well when Romo got hurt, and they had the number one offensive line in the league that year, and Zeke was balling, and Dak he was, was playing running. good, and things were looking great, and still no postseason success. Yeah, and you can't say you're not surrounding him with talent either. They are. For sure. All right, well, love it, y'all. Y'all have a good one. You All too, right. bud. You too, have a good day, man. See you, bud. All right. Thank you, callers. Can't wait to talk to you tomorrow as well. All right, here's what I got tonight. Go women's basketball. That's right. LSU, plus two against Iowa. Don't think you'd be crazy to take them on the money line. I want to kind of protect myself with a little bit of insurance. Uh, I think LSU's 13 flavors are pissed off for greatness, so give me the, the Bengal Tigers. Plus two, that's a minus 110. And then... 
Juju Watkins, one of my favorite players to watch in women's basketball, USC, taking on UConn. Give me the over 135 and a half. I know UConn's game last time was low scoring, but I like the over there. That's what I got. Starting the month. Start. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Good job, everybody, in the month last month. But I'm winning this one. So just go ahead and, and buckle up. All right, because it's going to be smooth. Hashtag fake news. Let's go Braves minus two and a half. Minus. Plus 109. Playing the White Sox, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the Tigers. I want Tigers money line plus 114. Let's get the baseball action started. It's nerfy season, boys. Get it together. It's time for the Warriors. We're going to do this. Didn't start great yesterday with five and five. Um, I went three and three in my nerfies. You know, it's always darkest before the dawn. Is it? You were up like 30 years really? last week. All right, so it's only, it's only going to get better from here. Wow. So I'm going Mariners, Guardians, Nerfy. Then I'm going Mets, Tigers, Nerfy. That's minus 128. Mariners, Guardians, minus 20, 122. Boys, it starts today. The Nerfy train is rolling. Let's make some money. Ace Cone is going to take the Orioles money line, minus 162, and the Yankees to stay hot and go 5-0. and at minus one and a quarter. All right, Booster Club. All right, we got a couple donations here. Let's roll through these. Uh, $10 donation from F3 Shake and Bake. Got to learn how to ride with the fear, baby. Says, I hope Ryan Gate enjoyed that ATL butt whooping. <laughs> Shop on. Also, Edie only got called for one foul. Every fall, big, mon- big man was in foul tra- trouble. Explain it to me like I'm five years old, please. Well, I think they did foul Zach Edie, but I thought there was a couple, and not... Just fouls on Zach Eady. I thought there was a couple fouls on Purdue that that they didn't call at important junctures. Uh, I, I just felt like the game was officiated a little bit differently for one than the other. I get that it's probably ha- really hard to officiate Zach Eady. I would think that it's hard, but I, I would just make sure if I was going to be anything, it'd be consistent if I did have, some, have somewhat of a quick whistle or if the fouls were piling up. I get people that say, oh, you know, you got to call the fouls the way they come. I'm not saying you don't do that. I'm not saying you... Called a foul on one side, so you have to call one on the other. Uh, I would just like some consistency. All right, we had a donation from a reek on Friday in L.A. I guess you donated it late, buddy, and I didn't get to it with a $5 donation. Morning, boys. How did y'all feel about Duke the other day? We talked about that and said, Jake, how tired were you on Friday's show? <laughs> Pretty tired. Pretty tired. I think we all were. But, hey, look, you got gr- to gr- you gotta grind it out. Champions adjust. Championships, champions are, they adjust. Good job. Championships yeah. are won so by well. adjustments. That's all I was trying to. Let's get. go to two dollar uh, donation from War Chant. Says, "Can we can we Tanya Harding UConn players? No. Is that legal? No. War Chant. No. Probably the only shot you got. Yeah. Five dollar donation. Last one of the day from Chiefs Mode Jimbo. Why didn't Clemson just have Dabo run all the way down the bleachers and onto the court before the start of the game? Would have beaten Bama, in my opinion. I don't, I don't think you. I don't think you're too wrong there. I. You know, Clemson just just wasn't able to hit from the outside. I will say, at what at what point does Davo stop running down the hill? Can't answer that. But great run by Clemson. Yeah, great run. Oh, for sure. I mean, if you're Eight. you have nothing to be ashamed about if you're Clemson. So. All right, Paul. Could DJ Burns start in the NFL? Yes. Yes. Or no? I believe it. I believe it. Fifty-one percent. I'll say yes. Fifty-two percent. Yes. 57 percent nice. no they believe 43 the big dude man per yep sent appreciate it chat good day today yeah all right we still got uh six minutes to go here so I do want to cover a, a couple uh things in major league baseball that that happened this this past couple week uh past couple uh days did you see Jackson Holiday hit that leadoff home run in the in the minors mm, I don't know if I did I'm telling you this kid this this I saw a video and I hadn't seen it. I didn't realize. I think it was AAA. Jackson's in big leagues now. Okay, yeah. But he, uh, they were doing it. Had a bunch of these road to the show clips that that I was watching on TikTok, and then I saw Jackson Holiday's first at bat. I think in AAA, just absolutely drops it. Like, oh, dude, like almost straight out of a video game, absolutely drops the tank. That and and I tell you what, man, when I, when I look at the Braves pitching staff with Chris Sale, got to feel. That'll feel pretty good about, about the way it started. We'll see how it goes throughout the year if he can stay healthy. But just a couple points uh, that I had. And, and, you know, with the Major League Baseball season, I'm interested to see the block and the base rule, how that keeps going. All right, quickly, $2 donation from Chase Mills. Been doing my whole life, baby. Three out of three on the year so far on Nerfies. 
Love that. He's rolling with the Phillies and the Reds tonight. Chase, I'm going to roll with you, my big dog. Let's do it. Let's get it done. You got... We got Cleveland, Seattle, Detroit, and the Mets, and I'm also going to roll Phillies and Reds. It's not a show bet, but your boy will Definitely. be putting money on it. Yes. Also, uh, we're going to put the link for merch in the chat as well. Uh, make sure you go buy some Cranny Company merch. And we are heading to Gainesville, Florida this week. As I mentioned earlier, uh, going to be hosting a Lady Ballers event. Come out, hang out with us if you can. Uh, we're going to keep putting out the information on that. Uh, it's going to be 3.30 Eastern, so 2.30 Central, obviously, p.m., uh, to help save women's sports. It's absolutely ridiculous what's going on. They already poured chalk all over our uh, signs about us coming, but that's fine. Protesters are not. We're going to be there. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, uh, turn on those notifications, and make sure you uh, go grab some merch from that link. And just like MLB, opening day, 2024, we're going, going. Oh, oh adversity ball. That's a catch. We're gone. Gone. We can review it. Pinned it to the side.